everyone, welcome back to Tournament Centre here at Pro Tour Nagoya with me, your host Rich Hagen, and Mr. Luis Scott Vargas. Great <laughs> to have you here. Um, Luis, well, just for a change, he's doing quite well at Magic. Five <laughs> and O oh after the block constructed portion today. Now, Luis, Team Channel Fireball, and it's not just the team for you, it's your day-to-day -day business. Tell us a bit about day-to-day -day for you, first of all. Day-to-day, uh, -day, it actually varies. Uh -huh. I, mean, I make videos, draft videos, constructed videos, I do those. I write articles every now and then. Uh, I help run the website. I mean, I, I'm the, the content manager partially. Yep. You know, I do some of the more boring stuff like payroll or, sure. you know, uh, recruitment, that sort of thing. But and Pretty but much it's all, all magic all the time. Oh, yeah, I mean... There are there's very few parts of my job that don't involve magic, like almost directly. Okay, um, and then part of your job comes along when every pro tour comes along, and you are, in essence, I guess the team captain, the the boss, sure. for want of a better term, of uh, the chef de keep. We well, call it in a cycling <laughs> terms, I guess. Some someone's got to get everyone organized, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and it, it happens to be me, which. It seems to work for me and it seems to work for everyone else. Okay, so, uh, and is that taking care of the little details as well, like oh, yeah. the hotel, <laughs> the flights, and, you know, making sure everyone's got <laughs> when I, visas? Uh, and when I booked my flight through Wizards, you know, I and I told uh, Tracy, the, the woman who I was talking to, uh -huh. who I was talking to, and she, I was like, well, there's probably going to be a couple more people just going to be asked for the same itinerary. She's like, yeah, just have them do that. And then, like, six more people got the same itinerary. Yeah, and so. that, that's clearly the way forward. And you're on the kind of grand swing at the moment, aren't you? Because you, you've been to yeah, this is Singapore. We, week and... three of four weeks of tournaments uh -huh. with the Community Cup sandwiched in the middle of two of them. Yeah, and congratulations <laughs> on that. It's a great that's, recognition. Yeah, I'm really and, looking forward to it. It's going to yeah. be really fun. And it's one of those things I guess you can't wait to get sort of embarked upon, apart yeah, from anything I, else, because you haven't had a I, chance. I have not had a chance to really, you know, process it, think about it, brew decks, and yep. that's because we've been <laughs> too busy coming up with this masterpiece. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the deck on the table, the masterpiece, the channel fireball, the definitive deck. Oh, wait, it's it's tempered steel. Well, well, see, like Paris, we have the best deck in the room. You know, Paris with Cobbler. Yeah. Except this time, so does you know, 25% of the field. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we certainly did not invent this, and. I'd like to think we tuned it pretty well, but it was not what we had all expected to play come the beginning of the block. Yeah, and I, I guess not only not what you expected to play, but in a sense not what you wanted to play because you would have <laughs> hoped that any of Rogue deck A, B, C, D, E, or F was going to break the format. You, and, you, you know. have no idea how much time I spent <laughs> with Consecrated Sphinx in my deck <laughs> testing blue-black, blue-white, red-blue-green. Where, you know, some, all combinations yep. of these colors, because Consecrated Sphinx is an amazing card. I, I would be very surprised if it didn't be, be, become a huge player in standard once the set rotates. Sure. Yet I could not get it to, be, to beat this deck. It just didn't happen. So, this is, if you like, the big boogeyman in the room. Oh, most well, certainly. Can you beat White Weenie? Let's look at the deck in detail, because you're going to be playing against this a lot if you play block. We start over here on the right with Memnite. They cost nothing for a 1-1 one, one and their artifact. This is pretty key. Up we go to one single vault sketch. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> well, we wanted to make room for more, but we didn't want to cut anything. So we have one. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's, not, it's not too complicated, but we think he's worse than, well, all the other cards we have four of. The only difference, like Josh Adder Layton, for example, has two blade splicers and two vault scourges. Okay. But we, we like blade splicers, so... Mm -hmm. Then we get Origin Spellbomb, gets you a card when you t make your 1-1, Signal Pest. Uh, how important is that to the way that it runs? Your, your nut draws all revolve around Memnite and Signal Pest. The more okay. the better. You, these are the two cards you want in your opening hand. I mean, you, don't, you, don't, you want Tempered Steel in your opening hand more, obviously, but those are the two cards that you actually kill them with the vast majority of the time. Okay. Well, and Glint Hawk Idol. <laughs> then we head up to two, and Glint Hawk Idol, um, in a sense, clunkier than Glint Hawk, which is also the 2-2 two -two flyer, right. but Artifact doesn't die to Sorceries, keeps coming back, yeah. doesn't die to The fact to that it effects. doesn't die to Sorceries is so insane, because yep. you can lead with Signal Pest in a Glint Hawk Idol, you have two guys on the board, but if they slag strong, you just lose the Signal Pest. Then you slam down Tempered Steel and Yeah. Um, up we go again, I mean, at three we've got Blade Splicer, when it enters the battlefield you get a 3-3 three -three which has first strike as long as blade splices around. <laughs> Was very relevant today. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, c I can imagine it would be. And then we get the full set of the mythics, the human knight, the hero of blade hold. And I guess 
in a sense, that four toughness is less relevant right now because the key things that are killing things like this are dismember and artillerize. But it's still a big guy. Well, it, it ends up being relevant once you board and you have uh, your plus two, plus two for free to stop those five damage spells. Yeah. But uh, yeah, any deck that we came to the conclusion very early that playing less than four heroes just makes no sense. Because heroes, the like I win card. It's your, it's really your plan B. Your, your your plan A is tempered steel, but the deck's full of cards that beat tempered steel. Uh huh. You just lose to hero. Like a hero by itself will win you the game. Yep, absolutely. Like, a deck full of slag storms and creeping corrosions and scrap melters. Yeah, sure, they kill these guys, then you play hero and they lose. Yeah, because this guy here, as you can see, well, this lady here, let's be fair, the human knight, not an artifact, and that's yeah. really key. Yeah. So yeah. it turns out. No interaction with Tempered Steel at all in that sense, but it's white and that protects from a lot of the hate in the format. Now, as Luis has already said, Tempered Steel is th the name card and it's easy to see why. Artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. One of those is very close to game and I've watched any number of people th this morning run out a second one and yeah. nothing, nothing lives through the second Tempered Steel. No, especially with Ink Moth Nexus, which Leads to a surprising number of the decks wins. Yeah, now let's talk about this land down here, Ink Moth Nexus. Pretty much, is it fair to say that almost the entire field is running four of these, pretty much regardless of color and... and uh, so, some of the like two and three color decks or four color decks if are, you're Suyoshi. Are struggling a little? Uh, don't play Ink Moth Nexus, okay. but everyone else plays it and it's, it's, it's at its best in this deck, I think. Yeah. Because the Mono Red deck plays it because it's like free mm -hmm. and it helps Artillerize or whatever, but this deck has Tempered Steel in it. and. I mean, I won a game against Red Black where he killed all my creatures, uh -huh. but I had Tempered Steel and two Nexus, and he just died in two hits. Yeah, that's, that's pretty brutal. Um, let's just look, in a sense, at the utility up at the top here. We've got Land in Relic Waters uh, and Dispatch. How, how do they sort of fit into the deck? These are the only cards in the deck that interact with the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, four Relic Waters, because we thought this was the best deck by a mile. Mm -hmm. Though, they actually haven't been as good as you'd think, because less people are playing it than they should. Uh, for Dispatch, which are quite good. I mean, when the Consecrated Sphinx decks, you know, play their big finish, their Worm Coil or their Consecrated Sphinx, you just go, because you often have one sitting in your hand that hasn't done anything. And, you, and you have Metal Craft, so it's not tapping. It is essentially oh, exile. It I, did, I did tap today, and he, but I think he was dead anyway. So. <laughs> okay, let's just head over to the left-hand side briefly, and just very briefly, looking at the sideboard, one of the questions here, we've got a couple of Marrow Shards, one Dismember, double contested war zone, couple of Elspeths, the full set of mutagenic growth, and as you say, that's really important. With the hero blade hold, do that, it becomes 5-6, gets out of range of dismember and artillerize, double indomitable archangel, and a couple of revoke existence. I guess my first question is, one dismember, seems like a, 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 an we, odd number, what's the thinking? Basically the dismember is there for when you want one additional removal spell. This deck cannot sideboard much, our sideboard is like, a very light touch. Like okay. the only matchup where we like sideboard a ton of cards is against mono red or like black red. Mm -hmm. But against like the mirror or against like most of the blue control decks, you sideboard in just a couple of cards because, I mean, this is a pretty finely tuned machine. If you you can't take out very many of the cards. So in that sense, and and this is interesting, it's an aggro deck, but that characteristic of it makes it more of a combo deck in in essence. Yeah, I mean, look at Signal Pest and Tempered Steel and Dispatch. Like, these cards all get worse the less of them there are in the deck. Sure. If you want to side out, like, Mem Knights or, or Signal Pest, these get way worse, the Moxes get worse. For the record, we don't actually side those out, so... <laughs> okay, let me ask you, yesterday there was a bit of a, what I might call a team wobble, because <laughs> you've decided that you're going to play Tempered Steel, right. which feels like a, almost a, a disappointing answer, as we've said. And then yes, in, in as much as wouldn't it have been great if we found a birthing pod deck that was amazing, or yeah, a blue-white <laughs> control deck that just destroyed everything. And you didn't have that, you had the deck that everyone else had. And then suddenly there was this feeling yesterday of, maybe we look at the red decks. And it was almost like, it, it wasn't about decks, it was about metagame and perception of what people were going right. to play. And, and like uh, Kibler and Brad both ended up playing Mono Red. And then, well, so did Conley, but a very different version because he's Conley. Yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah, and there, I mean, I considered it as well, but then I think what really drove it home is I played a game with the Mono Red deck against Tempered Steel, and I had like turn one Galvanic Blast, turn two Sphere of the Suns, turn three and four Scrap Mills, or turn five Kalotha Phoenix, and I lost and it wasn't close. And I was like, okay, look, if, if this is what you, you can do and still lose, then we just have to play this deck. The, the worst part about playing this deck is we did not find anything that broke, breaks the mirror. 
Sure. And in fact, I think our build might actually be a slightly disadvantage because instead of more Vault Scourges, we have like Blade Splicers and Spell Bombs, cards that are a little more clunky. Okay. But I'll take a coin flip in the mirror if I beat everything else, and I didn't play any mirrors and I beat everything else. <laughs> okay, which is fantastic. But one of the things that's going to be tricky to work out is because so many people have played decks pretty much like this, right. they're going to go right through the range. There are going to be people who went gone zero five 5 with this deck. Oh, right yeah. the way, the 2-3s, the 3 twos, up to you at 5-0. and oh. How much of the 5-0 and oh can you put down to an element of play skill? Is it a fairly on-rails deck, or, or are you making plenty of choices along the there way? There is not as much play with this deck as I would like, Uh huh. but that being said, it's still magic. You still have to play the game, and there's still a lot of decisions. When After playing 10 games against Josh, when we were both playing you know, versions of White Wind and we went 5-5, even though it looks like a coin flip to us, the fact is we take a lot for granted. And there are ways, people find ways to lose games every day. <laughs> that is true, because there isn't always a way to win, but there's always a right. way to lose. Uh, Louis Scott Vargas doesn't <laughs> lose terribly often. And once again, the man who last year went 16-0 in the Swiss of a Pro Tour, well, he's got part of the way there, 5-0 in Constructed. Now on to draft. Luis, thank you once again, no not just for this, but for all you do for the community. Many thanks. I'm your host, Richard Hayden, for Tournament Centre, saying bye.